Welcome to the last set of news to get top stories in crypto and bring out a bite sized pieces today. Just the thumbnail suggests we're going to talk about what El Salvador is doing with all of their massive gains for Bitcoin. And they're really just telling the, the world and the IMF, yes, we took these profits. And even though you were laughing at us, well, who's laughing now? So we'll take a look at exactly what they're doing as far as infrastructure. We'll also take a look at uh, some new stories about Atari. Snoop Dogg and Sandbox the Metaverse. I'm gonna talk about why I just bought a boatload of Matic and what it really comes down to actually what I used it for. And lastly, we're gonna talk about uh, an upcoming real estate buy and I'm gonna kind of try to bring you into the fold and talk about uh, what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So we'll take a look at all those things, but first take a look at uh, the market. So today, hey, it's a pretty, another great day. November is right on track for what we thought it was. Things are going pretty well and everybody's ecstatic. But uh, just remember that uh, what goes up must come down, but we we must celebrate these days as investors because, you know, these are good days and this is what all the hard work is really all about. So we take a look at uh, the market itself. We're using Trade the Chain for sentiment analysis. Sentiment's looking pretty good. And of course, with Trade the Chain, they do all the... Uh, the the, the, the scavenging for the data. They go through all the interwebs and the blog posts for the different exchanges. They also have a direct API integration into Twitter. So this is what the sentiment is. And we're looking at a market cap around 2.7, almost $2.8 trillion. Bitcoin price is looking uh, pretty sharp at 63. And uh, hey, I, I see 64, 65 right around the corner, but we will see. Also, uh, Ethereum, <clears throat> last 24 hours is up 4%, almost 4,500 bucks. Binance coin is up. Tether, nobody cares. Uh, Cardano, watch out, 2%. Wow. Uh, Solana, 5%, uh, 212, XRP, everything, anything down. Shiba, well, that's, that's amazing because it's been up so, for so much. Terra, Chainlink, Polygon, Matic, 2%, 3%, anything up really fantastic. 13% for crypto.com. Congratulations, crypto.com holders, and so on and so forth. 10% for Clay. Wow. And then uh, also, if, we, if we're, uh, want to do a little bit of trading, take a look at the projected range for the next uh, uh, hour or so. I would take a look at what we're talking about. Orchid, NKN, Monacoin, Loop Ring, which was on a tear as well. Wax and Neo. Wow, I haven't heard Neo in a long time. So that's what we have as far as uh, gains. Let's also take a look at what's going on as far as on-chain analysis. And this is from uh, CryptoQuant. I've been using them uh, because first of all, they're super easy to use and uh, they actually do some pretty good training. And I reached out to CryptoQuant. I said, hey, I'd like to have you guys on and uh, we could do some uh, some training for everybody as far as on-chain analysis. And they said, yes. So I'm gonna have the CEO on. He's gonna explain to us exactly how they use on-chain analysis. I'm gonna put a couple of videos uh, on YouTube, on this channel, and the rest I'm gonna put in that 100% free website called Dan Teaches Crypto, so you can learn all about on-chain analysis uh, from the real experts. So uh, what we have here for crypto quant as far as on-chain analysis is what I like to see, uh, all miners outflow. The more miners sell, sell off their their bitcoin the more it kind of just takes a big dump but lately we haven't seen that they're actually holding on because they know what's going to happen and again this is not investment uh, advice it's just investment opinion but i do think november december are going to be great and then january february march it's up in the air but uh november december i don't see us going uh too far down we'll just say that also as far as the reserves the more that people take bitcoin off of the exchanges is good news because it means they're holding. And then of course, once that happens, the exchange is like, hey, we have a, uh, a supply crunch. We don't have enough. And then all of a sudden the price goes up and we can see that over the last uh, year or so, it's uh, actually spiked around here, but we just been going down and now we're at a, an all time low for the year. And that is just Bitcoin. Of course, Ethereum is doing the exact same thing. People are taking that off the exchanges and what happens? Price goes up, uh, everybody's happy, looking good. And also there's a couple more metrics I wanna make mention. This is the Coinbase premium index for Bitcoin and the premium index for Ethereum. This is the difference in price between uh, Coinbase and Binance. And as that uh, goes up, that means that usually uh, price will actually go up uh, as far as like uh, the difference. And we can see here that the Coinbase premium index between Coinbase and Binance is uh, skyrocketing. And we can see the same thing happen over here. As soon as there was a difference, then we have, and it goes up like this. Same thing with Ethereum and off we go. So that is what we have for the markets itself. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Let's jump into our first piece, which is all about <laughs> El Salvador shows the world. Or as I like to call it, who's laughing now? And uh, I love these stories because uh, throughout the time, throughout the time that me and you invest in the crypto, uh, we know it's it's a little bit uh, um, harrowing, a little bit difficult because a lot of people are like, why do you get into that? 
It's so volatile. You shouldn't really do that. Or they just totally ignore you and be like, that's a dumb uh, investment. And these are the times, because there's so much volatility, where we take a look at it and go, hey, worked out pretty well for me. Why didn't you do what I told you to do? But uh, that's uh, another video. So this is what we have for today. And I'd love to see these things. So this is uh, uh, El Presidente uh, from El Salvador, Bukaleli. And he just told uh, the press, he goes, what El Salvador used their Bitcoin for as far as the profits, they built, first of all, they built an animal shelter. Uh, and then also they're building 20 schools. And I thought, hey, that's pretty great uh, for them to do for all the profits. And I said, oh, well, that's how you do it. Here in America, we just tax the living tar out of everybody. And then, of course, sometimes we build the schools and sometimes we don't. But uh, that's uh, how it's done, which is an amazing thing that a, a third world country figures it out and says, hey, you know what? Uh, we're going to take Bitcoin. We know where it's going to go. We're going to invest into it. We're going to buy these dips like a smart investor would. And then we're going to take those profits, even though the IMF thinks that we're crazy and they're laughing at us. And we're going to take that and build infrastructure. That is an amazing accomplishment. And uh, I just got to say tip of the hat for uh, the people of El Salvador to actually do this and accept it because uh, there was a lot of people rooting against you, a lot of powerful people. And now, and I think even more so in the future, we're going to see just how big this could actually be. And then I also put together a little spreadsheet because I like to see like, you know, how much they made. Remember, El Salvador, not a rich country. And uh, if they just would have stuck everything into dollars, well, we know the purchasing power goes down and down and down, which is what the IMF want to do as far as loans. They still want to do loans, but uh, they're like, hey, we can back this with Bitcoin regardless of getting off topic so here was the, the the purchases that i could i could find so the very initial purchase was september 6th bitcoin price is 51 september 7th they bought the dip the very first like imagine this you're a country and everybody's like you are insane to do this at buying bitcoin at 40 51 000. in 24 hours it drops and like I mean, 20%, 15%, somewhere around there. And they're like, you know what we're going to do? We're going to double down. And they bought the dip. And even the president even tweeted about it. He's like, you know, come at me. So 43,000, it's their 20th, 45,000. And they just bought it again at 58,179. So this is how much they, they purchased. Uh, it was uh, 400. Uh, so the sum was 1,120. Sorry if you can't see that. This is down there. Here's the value uh, at the time. <clears throat> And here's the Bitcoin price today. Well, that's changed a little bit. So let's just change that, shall we? To Let's just round up. I like round numbers. makes it simple. So let's just do this. 64,000. And look at that. <clears throat> so here's the value today from what it was. And here's the difference in price. So I'm just going to add this up real quick. And I'm going to cheat and use the, <laughs> the Google spreadsheet. You're looking at a sum of $13,633,270. And that's in two months. That's in two months. So if they just would have played by the rules, done the things that are universally accepted, then they would not have this money. They would not have the ability to do the things that they want to do for their country and hopefully uh, bring the country out of poverty. So again, for everybody out there who's like, you know, I just get, you know, sometimes the people around you just don't understand what you're doing. They don't understand why you're doing it. They don't understand why you're getting into this, this new asset. It's because uh, things are going the right way and they're actually going uh, as planned and even El Salvador is on board. The, the big question though, is what's the next domino to fall? What's the next country to get into it? Because I can only tell you this, when the price of Bitcoin continues to go up and even plan B in his TA, not his stock to flow in his TA, he's talking about 98,000, so I think 98,000, 89,000, I was getting confused, uh, for the end of November. If that happens in El Salvador, keeps buying the dips or just holds on, what do you think the rest of the country is going to do? That might be a good deal. And then, of course, then it's just dominoes continue to fall. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece as we talk about Atari, Snoop Dogg, and Sandbox. And like I said yesterday, I'm fascinated by the metaverse. Uh, I'm fascinated by real estate, getting the, the, the real uh, real estate, the physical real estate, but virtual real estate. And I found this was interesting. So Rob over at uh, Rob Shisesh, oh, it's Jerry Hall. Uh, he sent this to me. He goes, hey, Rob, just so you know, Atari and Sandbox are bringing it back. Why is this important? Why is this interesting to me? Well, first of all, who better to make a pixelated game than Atari? 
you know? And that's kind of like, like what is going on. And this is the sandbox. The sandbox, if you don't know, it is a, it is a metaverse. And this little video just sums it all up. Play with friends and then earn sand or cryptocurrency. So it's a play to earn on top of a metaverse, kind of like Decentraland as well. And uh, these are one of the things that uh, I didn't get into Sandbox, but I got into uh, Decentraland a long time ago, like we talked about videos before. But here's what's going on with this. And this is why I'm so uh, bullish on digital properties because of what you can do with it. This is an example of how Atari is aggressively putting its name on everything from new VCS game consoles to hotel chains. And then down here, just this is like a, the land box for like virtual worlds you can actually buy or virtual plots of land. And Atari bought a piece of that. And under the terms of the agreement, Atari will receive large digital spaces known as estates in the sandbox gaming metaverse. On these estates, 3D voxelized versions of Atari's classics, popular games, and they're able to be played. Atari and Sandbox will develop Atari-inspired in-game assets for game creators to use in their own games. So great. Why did I bring this up? It's because if you are looking for virtual land, this is probably one of the best times to get it. Again, not investment advice, just investment opinion, because I can guarantee Atari didn't pay peanuts for this space they know where things are going as another a lot of different uh, companies are, are actually looking into it They're like look we like the marketing aspect we want to put our placard here our information our 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 reach into this space and we'll pay a pretty penny so what do you think is going to happen later on down the line when like not only big businesses but medium-sized business even small businesses want to get into the game well whoever owns that land guess what they're going to pay they're going to pay that person, that individual, that group of people who actually have that virtual land. So it's just physical land uh, going into the, into the virtual space and monetizing that sector. It just makes a lot of sense to me. On top of that, uh, you have to remember, and I, Jerry Hall, <laughs> my man Jerry, he sent this to me. He goes, hey, just so you know, Sam, Snoop Dogg is getting into the metaverse. <clears throat> I hadn't seen this before, but this is actually four weeks old. It's about a month old when this actually came out. And it was pretty cool. And it's just, again... Once celebrities start to go in, you're like, is this the top? No, this isn't the top. This is just getting started. Actually, Snoop Dogg's been at the forefront of a lot of different things. That guy's a, a real business shark. And then uh, when it, the one thing that did disturb me, though, is that when you click on create account for the sandbox, it says here, log in or create an account. And, I'm, and it says continue with Facebook. I'm like, what? Why would I continue with Facebook so they can steal all my data? I don't even use Facebook anymore. <clears throat> Excuse me. Continue with Twitter, with Google, eh, Bitsky, and of course, continue with MetaMask. So I see as time goes on that we're going to see a dichotomy of these decentralized spaces where it's going to be like the Facebook type of places where you can pretty much give up your uh, identity and information and maybe get something back for it. Or you can be more um, autonomous and a little bit uh, have a little more anonymity uh, and they can't track you as much. And that's just how I see things. So let me just think about that in the comment section. This is why I'm excited about these spaces. And let's move on to my next piece, I'm kind of ahead of myself, but uh, why I bought a boatload of Matic. And the reason why I bought it was Snook. And Snook, as I've been talking about before, play to earn games. I know a lot of, a lot of the demographic on my channel, you guys don't play a bunch of games. I get it, doesn't matter. Check this out. So this is Snook, and it's just a it's just a snake game. Basically, all you do is you just have a snake, and you just uh, d direct it into eating different things and whatever else. That doesn't matter. So I reached out because I was having problems with uh, my Brave browser. I reached out to the the guys at Snook. They go, Yeah, we'll just we'll just give you a, a free Snook. They gave me Elon Snook. Hilarious. So like that's great. And then uh, I gave them my my MetaMask wallet, and they go, Oh, also we're gonna give you a little bit of uh, of Matic. So you can actually mint it and uh, use it. I was like, oh, okay, because I don't want to play, you know, like 50 bucks gas fees to pay, play this game. Now check this out. This is what's interesting. You see that right there, that fee, the estimated gas fee, 0 0.002 Matic. And Matic right now, let me just bring this up because I did not get this going. If we take a look at the price of Matic, I want to say it's like three bucks. Two bucks, some around there. Two bucks, two dollars. Okay, so my fee, which again, Matic is a layer two solution on top of Ethereum, 
so you can do transactions. That was the fee to get things done. And when I took a look at that, I was like, okay, I get it. So we know layer two is going to be right around the corner. We know that these base layers, like the Ethereum, like the Avalanche, like Cardano, like Solana, they may have layer two solutions. Some may not need it, some may, depending on how centralized things are. But when I saw something like this, I'm like, yep, yeah, I think uh, there's going to be a pretty big play for Matic because everybody bitches about the, the uh, gas fees. Well, now there's not uh, too much to complain about if we're going to move over in that space. So that to me was pretty amazing. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. The only thing about Snook I had a problem with was with... Um, with the Brave browser, it wouldn't uh, sync up with MetaMask. They said they were working on a, on a fix. They said they already fixed it, but it didn't really work out too well for me, but maybe just my browser. But you can check that out. I will link that in the description, another play-to-earn type of game, and it looks pretty cool. So that's, uh, that's what we have as far as uh, the last uh, pieces. And the very last piece I want to talk about is the upcoming real estate buy. So uh, as you know, I like to diversify a little bit. It's not just about crypto, crypto, crypto. There's other things uh, in our lives that we should probably be a little bit of uh, as far as diversification. I like assets. And there's going to be um, a big purchase coming up. Uh, it's, a, it's an eight-unit property here in uh, uh, Puerto Rico. And I'm going to talk to you about how I funded it, uh, how I'm going through the process, uh, how it works out with Airbnb and Verbo, and how it is uh, just another source of income. And the big thing is how I use crypto to fund this project. And hint, it's not about me selling crypto, it's about taking loans out against the crypto using Celsius and going that same route that we did before on another condo that we use. And I'm just gonna show you how it's all done. Essentially gonna show you how the sausage is made and uh, we'll see how it all works out. But that's what we have for today. So look, I know, uh, a lot of things going on. I know we're kind of uh, covering a lot of different spaces here, but uh, look, November, December, this is what we all kind of waited for. Expect volatility and expect uh, things to go down. I, I see a pullback coming, but uh, not a big deal because in the long run, uh, again, it's all about what's greater. Uh, the time in is greater than the time in in this market. So I mean, just imagine what's going to happen in five years or 10 years. That's all I got. So look, it made it all the way in. First, I want to say thanks. I appreciate you sticking with me. If you like the video, found some value, give a thumbs up, give it a like, consider subscribing. Everything's going to move pretty fast. And that's it for today. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.